Sounding the horns and blowing the trumpets, the Watchman Radio Program. This program is all about the end times and it is to open your awareness to the times that we are living in and to make you aware of the nearness of the soon and the imminent coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Greetings and welcome back to another edition of the Watchman Radio Program. The title of the program today is Are You Telling or Teaching? Are You Telling or Teaching? And uh, I think I can say with confidence that most of us or even all of us we would like to see uh, others do right especially if we are in a position of leadership where we are able to talk to others, to try to uh, show others the path that they should be taking in, in life, that we sincerely want to see them do the right things, to say the right things, and so on. We want everybody to get to heaven. But the question is, are we going about it the right way? Are we going about it the right way? Are we getting the results that we hope for. Hopefully by the end of this video I'll be able to show you that uh, by telling and by teaching we can see that we will get two different results and one way, one of these ways uh, if we were to really apply it that we will get better results you might say oh telling teaching what's the difference is there a difference but as you watch as you listen hopefully by the end of the video you will be able to see that there is indeed a very big difference and the results that you get either way is very different as well there's a saying that goes, you can take the horse to the river, but you can't force it to drink the water. And that is so true. You can lead your horse or donkey or whatever uh, to get water to drink, but if that horse is not thirsty, if he does not want the water, you cannot force it to drink it. There's another saying that says, you can give a man a fish and you can give a man a fish and feed him for a day. Or you can teach the man to fish and you will feed him for a lifetime. So you can give handouts and it will only serve for that little short period of time. But if you teach that person how to get what you are giving them, they can always go and get it for themselves. And they will be always be satisfied without any further uh, intervention from outside sources. So there's a big difference as we can see even from these saints. See, when you tell someone to do something or not to do something, they may, they may obey. They may obey you. But, you know, it, most times it will last only for that time. You tell your, 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 tell your, your, your child, your, your children, oh, don't do this. Don't let me see you do that again. But the moment your back is turned, they will go and do it. But if you teach them and show them that their actions are wrong and they really understand you, whether your back is turned, whether you are around, yes or no, they will obey because they will know in their hearts, in their minds, that what they are doing is wrong. And you will see that when you teach people the wrong and the right, rather than just telling them not to do it or not to do that, if you teach them that what they're doing is wrong, you will get a different result from them. You see, it will bring inner change. Teaching brings change to the heart. Telling someone is just telling them uh, and they will do it out of obligation. But when you teach them, 
they will do it from conviction and there's a big difference there so obedience due to conviction is lasting but obedience due to obligation or from telling if you want to put it that way on the other hand is but for a moment when they have that understanding and their, their obedience will be will more likely uh, to be permanent as they will be doing it under conviction as I said before but let's just dig just a little bit deeper just for a minute or two uh, to understand these two terms that I've just mentioned uh, obedience and conviction what is obedience it is a compliance with an order or a request or a law or submission to another's authority by definition that is obedience conviction what is conviction conviction is a strong persuasion or belief that is not easily changed let me read that again conviction is a strong persuasion or belief that is not easily changed when you are able to convict someone of their actions getting them to know that their actions are wrong it becomes a belief you persuade them to stop doing it that is the difference between telling and teaching you tell someone it's wrong oh they will not do it in front of your eyes but behind your back they will go and do it but you persuade you convince you convict them and they will not do it anymore regardless of who or what is watching them so obedience without conviction is complying with an order request or law without a strong belief that it is necessary in other words there's no real change in you you won't change because you're just complying uh, because you were told to because someone expects you to but what is god's position on this matter uh, what uh, is he looking for from you we we'll go to the scriptures one verse of scripture that i'll be sharing with you today from the book of first samuel chapter 16 verse 7 he says but the lord said to samuel don't judge by his appearance or hide for i have rejected him the lord doesn't see things the way you see them people judge by outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. Very important uh, passage of scripture uh, relating to what we're talking today. Uh, showing you, God, he looks on the inside. He wants change. He wants to see change from the inside. Your outward compliance means nothing to him. You can do something but in your heart you do not want to do it to God you have not done it and we have to really uh, come to that realization today you see the long and short of the matter is that God is not impressed with outward obedience he wants obedience from the heart obedience that come comes through conviction so instead of just telling someone they are wrong, teach and convince them. Teach and convince them uh, that what they're doing is wrong and allow them to decide for themselves. Allow them to come to that conviction that what they're doing is wrong. So, so you know, it's good to, I'm not saying you shouldn't tell, but if you combine the two, if you combine the two and stress on teaching so that they can understand so that they can come to that realization for themselves and, and bring change inward change you know what you're doing will not produce the result that you're hoping for you will not 
uh, uh, bring that change uh, that God is looking for in that person or in that individual. You see, when you do it this way, through conviction, when the person <clears throat> acknowledges his or her wrongs, you know, they will be willing to change. They will be willing to change and do what is right. And this is how we grow as Christians. This promotes growth as Christians when we're able to know that what we are doing or what we decide not to do, that is really not right. And we decide for ourselves not to do it, not because we were told not to, not because we are expected, we are, uh, expected not to do it, but because we know for ourselves, we know in our hearts that it is not right. That shows that you have grown spiritually. You know, as we prepare for the Lord's return, let us also prepare those that are entrusted to us and prepare them in the right way. Are you telling or teaching? Teach people. Teach people the ways of God. Don't just tell them, but teach them the ways of God. Teach them what God expects right Teach them the right. Teach them the wrong. Teach them. Don't just tell them. So it is very clear, and it should be very clear by now, that there is indeed a very big difference between telling someone and teaching someone. Just like in that second uh, saying that we, we mentioned uh, earlier in the program, where you can give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day. That is just like telling them something. But if you teach the man how to fish, you will feed him for a lifetime. So very important. And you know, it is such a vast difference of helping that person so yes you have helped the person both ways but you have helped that person so much more when you teach them are you telling or teaching if you are only just telling and not really teaching i would uh, advise you today admonish you to really start teaching them teach them what is wrong and they will stop doing it. So with that, I'll come to the end of uh, the, the program. But just before I go as usual, I want to extend that free gift of salvation that Jesus Christ has offered, is offering to you today again. It's very important that I do this every week because our time here in this world is short much shorter than most of us really think. Jesus Christ is coming back very soon and he wants to take you with heaven with him when he comes. Sin takes us to hell. Righteousness will take us to heaven. The Bible says in the book of uh, Romans chapter 3 verse 10, that no one is righteous not even one of us so how can we get to heaven if none of us are righteous through jesus christ he is our righteousness and by accepting him as lord and savior we will be clothed in his righteousness when the when when god the father looks on us they will see he will see his son as we are covered in his blood and clothed in his righteousness again that is why uh, Romans uh, 3 23 says everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard we all need Jesus no one can get to heaven without him he is the way and he is the truth and he is 
the life. Refusing his offer of salvation, if we reject him, we will have to pay the price for sin. Because sin has a price that has to be paid. And everyone must pay that price if they are without Jesus. What is the price or penalty for sin? Romans uh, uh, 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life to Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, all of us, we are sentenced to die the second death if we go to, to, to the judgment seat without Jesus Christ. That is why Jesus came and he died for us. He died for us so that we will not have to pay the penalty for our sin because by his death, by his sufferings, he took the penalty. He suffered for us, for you and for I, so that we will not have to. This is the, sal this is the salvation that we're offering to you today so that you can get to heaven through Jesus Christ and what he did for you on that cross. It is very simple to receive salvation. It is not a complicated matter. A very serious thing as we will learn in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. It says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it says you will be saved. Verse 10 says, For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. A very simple matter. Openly declare it. Voice it. Believe it. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that he came and he died. So declare believe and you will receive that's all will it work for you yes it will it doesn't matter who you are it does not matter what you have done it doesn't matter if you are the worst person in this entire universe if you come to jesus with a sincere heart realizing that he is the one that can, that can save you then you will be saved just as it says in Romans chapter 10 verse 13 it says for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved everyone so you are not exempted you are not exempted don't harden your hearts today but as you hear the Holy Spirit crying out to you beckoning to you come to him come to Jesus today and give him your life, give him your heart, give him your all, fully surrender to him. He came and did the work for us. He is our shining light. That's as he says in the book of Romans chapter 12, uh, sorry, John chapter 12, verse uh, 46, which says, he says, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark all not some but all if you just put your trust in jesus today you don't have to remain in the dark anymore you can come over into the light where you'll be able to see where you're going see the path to righteousness come on the narrow road today come off of that broad road that uh, attractive broad road that eventually will lead you to certain and ultimate destruction come on the narrow road that will lead you to life will lead you to everlasting life will lead you to heaven where you will live with god in bliss forever surrender to jesus today before it's too late and there I'll come to the end of the program. I hope you uh, have taken heed to what the Lord has said today through me. If you'd like to contact me for any further clarification, please feel free to 
contact me through Facebook. Uh, the information is on your screen now. You can uh, search for either, either of my profiles, Curtis Minister Roach or Minister Curtis Roach, or even for, for, for the page, uh, the, the Watchman radio program. Leave me a message and I'll respond at my very earliest convenience. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel as you watch this video. Uh, you can uh, receive notifications when I upload uh, my future videos uh, should the Lord uh, tarry. And uh, you, as a subscriber, you will never miss an, another upload. There are hundreds of videos there that will answer almost any question that you may have. You can go and browse and watch as you, as you like. You can also follow me on Twitter at Roach underscore Curtis. Thank you once more for joining me. My final request again as usual, that you share this video. By sharing this video, you're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're sharing the good news to one and all that will uh, watch or listen to where you've sh shared it, whether it be to your friends, your family, uh, on your social media sites, you know I have I placed no restrictions on sharing my videos. You can re-upload them to your channels if you have uh, uh, YouTube channels, wherever you want to, however you want to, please feel free to do so. Our aim is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to the four corners of the world so that everyone will have the, the same uh, opportunity that we have today to receive this, this free gift of salvation. Again, thank you for watching and God richly bless you. And I'll see you next time if there is a next time. Bye bye. Hey, boy, sound is something known. Get it by that side. It's coming. Don't get left behind. Don't get left behind. Boy, it's yeah. coming. Don't get left behind. Don't get left behind